Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, New Breakthroughs in Search Engine Marketing. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. And for anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency. Jason, you're supposed to move the slide. <laughs> Got it covered. I'm here. All right. I just want to make sure you're awake. <laughs> And we're best known for our search engine optimization, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning websites. DealerOn was, in fact, named the top-rated website provider by Driving Sales in 2011, and DealerOn customers were winners of the Spring 2012 Digital Dealer Website Excellence Awards. DealerOn is so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we're the only company in the industry to offer a lead guarantee program. Oh yeah, I said it. So if your website company isn't guaranteeing you leads, then maybe you should check us out at DealerOn.com. And we have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Jason Wiley as our presenter today. Jason Wiley is the National Sales Director for Haystack Digital Marketing. Haystack is one of only 16 Google AdWords Premier SMB partners in all of North America. and is the only SMB partner that started out as a full-service automotive advertising agency. Jason has been around the car business since a child and has worked full-time in the auto industry since 1999. He's been the Director of Sales and Marketing at numerous successful automotive vendor companies and also co-owned his own full-service automotive advertising agency. Combining advanced technology with old-fashioned customer service, Jason is part of an amazing team who've helped advance Haystack to be the leading provider of digital marketing services to the automotive industry. Haystack's products and services are used by numerous, numerous publicly traded retailers and Automotive News Top 125 dealership groups. Jason is an avid traveler and can be reached at jason at haystack.com. Now during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature. It's located on the corner of your screen to submit them. They're going to come directly to me and at the end of the presentation, we're going to answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference and please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. <laughs> And guess what? Our good friends at Haystack are offering up some really sweet prizes today for you, our dear attendees. All you have to do is go to the Dealer On Google Plus page and respond to our post where we ask you to share your most successful pay-per-click tip or trick. That's all you have to do. The address is on the screen, so go now and you give us a decent answer and you'll be winning some Haystack swag today. Also, at the conclusion of the webinar today, you're going to receive a short survey. Please fill it out as we are always looking for quality feedback for our audience. And today, we will randomly select some winners from all the completed surveys to also receive some Haystack swag. So you have more than one opportunity to win some free stuff today. So. Let's get started. Let's learn about the new breakthroughs in search engine marketing. Jason Wiley, how are you today? I'm doing great, Eliana. Thank you <laughs> so much for the uh, opportunity to sit down and talk with you guys and talk with all the dealerships and stuff that are on board. Um, we've got a lot of ground to cover today, so we're going to try to burn through this. I promise that this whole entire thing is going to be highly educational. Uh, we're get, I hope that this spurns up a lot of questions because one of my favorite portions of this whole entire platform is uh, answering a lot of questions that come up at the end of it. And uh, so if you guys have questions, again, you can pump them in uh, directly into the webinar itself. Uh, Eliana is going to uh, kind of lead that and make sure she's gathering all those questions. Um, and so today what we're going to be covering is we're going to basically be going over uh, search engine marketing basically through the eyes of the search engines. Um, we're going to talk about why SEM is critical to a dealership's success. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to actually sit down and help dealerships uh, talk about SEM versus traditional advertising because it's a huge question that we get a lot from a lot of our clients, uh, how to set up proper budgets and all that kind of stuff. Um, one of the things I'm most excited about is to really educate the dealerships on what new technologies are available because everybody knows how quickly uh, that the internet digital landscape is changing. 
So we're going to talk about what new technologies uh, are out there and how a dealership can stay ahead. Uh, we're going to focus a little bit on mobile pay-per-click. We're going to uh, highlight some truths about display of remarketing. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, how you guys can track a whole heck of a lot more than just clicks and impressions and bounce rates and the simple stuff right now. Uh, and then we're going to turn that over uh, to a question and answer session. Um, but in, in talking with Eliana and the dealer on crew, one of the things that they uh, told us was that you know one of the best things we can possibly do is sit down and do some poll questions with you guys. So we're going to have about four or five different poll questions on here as, as well, and this is also going to get you guys some free uh, haystack swag. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Eliana right now to run the first question, and uh, well, hopefully we're going to get a lot of audience participation in this because we're going to use these questions at the end of this to also help you guys get some more stuff. I appreciate that, and and let me tell you, for that question and answer session, past audiences have been very, very tough on our speakers, so I hope you're ready for it, Jason. But we are going to launch our very first question today, so everyone out there in webinar land, if you wouldn't mind, please look at your screen now and answer the following question. Are you currently running pay-per-click advertising? Seems like a simple question, but we want to make sure that we you know, address everyone's needs today. And since we are talking about search engine marketing, we want to know if you've been thinking about it, if you're already doing it, if you haven't done it yet, or maybe you've tried it in the past and maybe it didn't work for you. Please select one of the following options. And once we get a majority of the votes in, well, then we're going to turn it over and share the results and see what you guys have been, what you guys have going on out there. Oh, we have a lot of people voting already. And Jason, I'm just going to ask you what, what you think the top answer is going to be. Um, I'm going to have to say the top answer is going to be yes. I think a lot of people are, are running pay-per-click. I think a lot of dealerships have, have definitely gotten, gotten on the SEM train. So you know what? We have almost everyone voting now. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to close the poll, and we're going to share the results right now. So if you look at your screen, you'll see the results. 65% of our attendees today said yes, they are currently running pay-per-click advertising. 13% of them said no. 10% said, I've been thinking about it, and 13% said, I tried it in the past, and it didn't work. So that's that, awesome. I think that's, that's right about what, what we thought it was going to be, wouldn't you say? Yeah, about that's A great. quarter of the people out there haven't really done it yet, and some people have tried it, but for the most part, most of our attendees have. So I'm going to turn it back over to you, and we have so right. much to cover, Jason. <laughs> I, I like it. That, that's awesome. That gives us a good snapshot. I'd say that that's pretty typical uh, from what we see like on a nationwide scale as well. So what we're going to go through and talk about today is we're going to actually have a lot of stuff in here that's going to be real quick overview. And I think one of the first founding things that, that we need to talk about really is, is just this is literally going to be the only plug about my company and throughout this whole entire thing. But I want you guys to understand who we really are. Um, my company, Haystack, we're, we're what's called a Google Premier SMB partner. Uh, that stands for being uh, the premier status with Google for handling small and medium-sized businesses. Um, there's thousands and thousands of companies uh, uh, nationwide that do search engine marketing, and Google has chosen us uh, to be one of the top 16 uh, companies in the entire North American continent to be a Google Premier SMB partner. Um, we're also a Bing uh, and Microsoft advertising reseller. So when you're looking at us from the eyes of the search engines, uh, we've literally achieved some of the highest levels of certification uh, and been very, very carefully vetted. And that's kind of why we're sitting here to talk with you guys today is because I'm here to really highlight and talk with you all about, um, you know, the search engine marketing through the eyes of the search engines. Because in order to understand how to tackle this beast, I think that's probably one of the first and foremost uh, priority things that you have to understand. So on the education factor now, um, what we want to do is I really, real quick, just want to set the uh, point. There's 13% of the people in here that haven't done uh, SEM before. And so a lot of times, a lot of uh, dealerships ask me, well, what's the difference between SEM and SEO? Should I have to do SEM? Do, uh, I thought my SEO was going to cover everything. And just to kind of like set the record straight, what we're going to talk about today is the, is the paid search results. So uh, throughout this presentation, if you hear me refer to it as paid search or SEM, or pay per click, that's, that's all uh, uh, different things for the exact same thing. But those are the top three areas that you see when you do a Google search over here. And those are also paid search results are the ones that show up on the right hand side. The organic stuff right here, like with what DealerOn tackles, uh, that w which is a great platform, 
uh, is, is these, and we're not going to focus on this. We're specifically going to be talking today about paid search, why it's important, and all that. So one of the first things I want to get everybody to understand is that you have to look at paid search from uh, the eyes of the search engines and really understand how quickly the, the industry is growing. Uh, this right here is the historical uh, monthly searches uh, that are happening online uh, throughout the years. And if you take a look in 2006, uh, per month there was about 2.7 billion searches uh, that were performed online in 2006. If you see this growth, it's absolutely staggering because uh, we go to 32.4 all the way up to now in 2011, there was 143 billion searches performed per month. That's a 5,200% increase in less than five years. Uh, and really put that into perspective, Facebook wasn't even around in 06. So <laughs> the, the industry itself is, is, is starting to, it's not starting to, it's booming. And one of the things that we also have to understand is, is and this is one of those things where it, it's like there's a lot of dealerships out there that we talk to that still want to fight the, the paid search uh, uh, you know, industry. And it's kind of one of those things where it's a train, you can either get on or it's going to run you over. And when you take a look at Google, you have to understand a couple of real simple things. Google is all about relevancy, and Google is a publicly traded company, and Google's got shareholders to answer to. Google's got to make money. When you sit down and you take a look at Google, in 2010, uh, their market cap was $197 billion. Big time company. Obviously, everybody knows that. But when you really sit down and pair into it about how does Google actually make their money, 96% of that $197 billion right there was done from Google by their paid search and their display and their online advertising things that they do. 4% of everything else that wasn't advertising made up the other percentage of, of Google's revenue. And really put this into perspective, I know there's a lot of dealerships in here. I pursue, I bet you, Eliana, we should have done another poll question that said how many dealerships have an iPhone versus an Android. Uh, but uh, but uh, I know that, with, that when you take a look at Android devices, and really to put this into perspective, Google, on a global scale, they activate 850,000 Android devices on a daily basis. That is staggering. And I have to say, I have an Android. <laughs> I Most people too. I know have iPhones, with... though. Most people I know have iPhones, at least around me. Yeah, iPhones are way cooler, but, you know. Hey, whoa, I'm a, whoa, I'm a I love my Droid Razor. <laughs> I love mine too, but I'm a partner with Google, and you know I, I don't look as cool, but I got a I got a sweet phone. I do like it. But but to really put that into perspective, though, 850,000 Android devices are activated daily, and that, along with every other product that Google offers outside of advertising, still only makes up four percent of their business. So Google's main focus is their is is advertising, and obviously that's that's the main key. But I really want to put that into perspective for everybody, so everybody can kind of really sit down and figure out how much of a giant. Uh, that this advertising industry really is. Um, when you take a look at Google as a market share uh, whole, when you take a look at every single business vertical out there, Google dominates about 65% of all the, pay, all, all the searches that are done online. So this is any business vertical. This is car dealerships. This is uh, you know plumbers. This is lawyers. This is finding restaurants to take your wife or your significant other one out to. This is, I mean, this is all that. But in the automotive landscape, it, this is interesting. Google has almost 77% of all automotive-related searches. So roughly eight out of 10 searches that are ever done online that have anything to do with vehicles are done through Google. Mm. And this is why uh, a lot of times a lot of dealerships have questions, well, should I get into Bing, should I get into Yahoo? We're going to talk a little bit about that. But that really depends upon the dealership's budget. But the main thing that you do want to start off with, if you haven't jumped into the bandwagon yet, is you really do want to start off dominating with the Google landscape. Um, so to give you the uh, uh, overall picture of the landscape, too, about all Internet marketing dollars, um, there's a whole lot of different great products out there. There's all the social media stuff. There's email marketing. There's newsletters. There's videos. There's all these different things that are out there. But when you still sit down and take a look at it, 91% of all Internet marketing dollars go specifically towards three different places, search, display, and mobile. So what we've found out is we want to try to figure out like why you know a dealership needs uh, search engine marketing, right? And that's obviously a, 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 a pretty important question for a dealership. But right now, just kind of break up the monotony, and I know I can get kind of boring, is I want to I turn this back over because we've got another poll question that we want to take from everybody right now. 
just to get feedback and, and to be able to report back to you what your peers are doing. So, Eliana, I'm going to turn that back over to you again. I think that's a great idea. Thank you so much, Jason. Yes, if everyone could look at their screen, we want to know what you have going on at your dealership. So, for your dealership, how much of your total monthly advertising budget is spent on the Internet? Please select one of the following options. Is it 0 to 15 percent? Is it 16 to 35 percent? 36 to 50 percent or is it over 50 percent of your advertising budget spent on the internet? We're very curious. We're going to share the results so you know, just like Jason said, what your peers here on this webinar today are also doing. And once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results and the votes are coming in very, very quickly. All right, Jason, I, you know I love doing this. I got to ask, which one do you think is going to win? Uh, I think it's probably the 16 to 35 percent mark. All right. Well, we're I could be dead out. wrong, though. <laughs> you could be. <laughs> I, I've been I've been wrong a lot more in my life than I've been right. <laughs> as long as you keep on learning, that's all that counts. You know what? We do Great. have a majority of the votes in, and of course, I want to thank everyone for their for their votes. It really is important to us that we tailor these these shows to exactly what you are looking to find and here are the results. Guess what Jason, you're actually right this time. So right. the, the leader today is 34 percent of our attendees today spend 16 to 35 percent of their advertising budget on the internet. Oh, but not to be outdone, some people are spending way more than that. 28 percent of our attendees are spending 36 to 50 percent we have an amazing 28% that are spending over 50% of their monthly advertising budget on the internet. And we have about 9% of people who are spending 15% or less of their advertising budget on the internet. So is that what you expected to see, Jason? Yeah, actually, that the uh, number over 50% is surprising to me. That's awesome. Very surprising uh, and delightfully so, I might add. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ecstatic about that. That means that we have some very, very forward progressive thinkers out there. And right now what we're going to get into is we're going to actually show you why uh, those, those people are going to be the leaders if they're not already in their markets and why they're going to be the, the dealerships that are setting themselves up for future success as well. So when you think about auto advertising, right, it's, it's really not what it used to be. Uh, and just as kind of, this is an interesting slide, I know everybody knows this, but it, it, it really shifts the dynamic, especially for those of you that are in the markets where you guys are still spending a lot of money on print. And again, uh, we actually come from this as a full service agency background, so I, I, the, a, a traditional advertising is absolutely critical to the dealership. I will never, ever tell a single store that they shouldn't be doing television, shouldn't be doing radio, shouldn't be doing all that stuff. Um, but when you take a look at 2000, 2010, and 2000, just a, you know, 12 years ago now, 52% of the dealership's total advertising budget went to the newspaper, and less than 5% of it went to the Internet. Really, right now, that's kind of swapped over to 22% uh, is in the newspaper and 23.7% of that's the Internet. And again, those are 2010 numbers. Um, historically speaking, I think that this number is actually a little bit closer to the average dealership is spending about 35% of their budget on the Internet. And um, we still think that there's more uh, that a dealership should be spending. We believe, uh, you know, from the full service background that uh, dealerships should be spending 40 to 50% or more on the Internet that dollars if they're doing it properly. Um, which is obvious, obviously a caveat, but that's kind of why you know this this whole entire business has been changing. And one thing I do want to mention: it's a really, really great study for everybody to look into. This is not done by my company or anything like that. This is from Chopper Sciences. Uh, this is the Zmot study, and a lot of dealerships know that, and a lot of dealerships don't. But the Zmot study really recognizes like what are the most influential mediums uh, to influencing a customer about what vehicle purchase they want to make. And when they sit down and they did this, um, basically, the long story short is out of all the different advertising mediums that are available, whether that's traditional, direct mail, or TV, or radio, or, or you know, uh, organizing softball leagues and doing all that kind of stuff that dealerships do, the Internet uh, is the second most influential portion of that, only second to the actual in-store, showroom, shopping experience of the customer. Mm. So... When you sit down and when that really sinks in, I can't really emphasize how important the Internet uh, is to a dealership and having all their ducks lined up in a row. Another ridiculous uh, stat on this when you're sitting down looking at it, and this is from J.D. Power, okay? Uh, most of these stats that I'm showing up here are not, don't have anything to do with our companies. They're from J.D. Power and ADA and all these. 
But when you sit down and you take a look at the customers, this is over about a five-year time period. The uh, light tan thing is the conducted Internet research and basically how, what's, how many people conducted Internet research. In uh, five years ago, the average person, uh, about all, less than 70% of the average consumers, you know, did their research online. And this chart right here is how many uh, the dealerships that they visited physically, how many showrooms that they went into. They went into 4.1. In just a five-year time period, the uh, average customer now, 84% of all people are doing research online to make a decision on their vehicle purchase. And right now, this is the biggest thing, 1.3 is the average number of physical showrooms that a consumer is visiting before they buy a car. So the big thing with this is everybody really has to understand this. And this goes way beyond search marketing as well. This is your reviews. This is your Google Plus local pages. This is uh, how your organic stuff is done. This is where you guys stand with uh, your video. I mean, this is the full entire gamut. This is your Facebook. This is every single thing that you do on the Internet. Customers are doing all their research online. 84% of people are going online. Okay? That's a staggering number. And now those customers, they're only visiting one dealership. There's a lot of reasons outside of just the Internet. It's the economy. It's the fact that, you know, uh, days aren't like what they were in the early and mid-2000s when we were just clocking everybody. Um, you know, the, the customers can't sit down and just pay a babysitter, you know, to watch their kids for two days over the weekend while they go test drive 17 cars. They're doing all their research online. They're making a long decision. They're taking longer to buy their car. And the first place that they go into is the place that they're going to go buy their car. So if you don't have your Internet presence buttoned up, you're not going to be that well, first dealership. And one of the big things here is that a lot of people, and, a, and this is a, a kind of a misconception in the dealership industry, I, I, a lot of times when we're asking clients, like, how long do you think a customer's in a car? I, you'd be surprised how many dealerships tell me, oh, I think they've only been researching vehicle for about a week or two. That's not, that's not true. These customers are in the market researching for what purchase it is that they want to make a lot longer than what everybody uh, thinks they do. The average customer is between two to three months. Um, we see 10% though of all people are taking seven to 12 months to make a decision about that. Um, but the average customer is really in the market for about two to three months. And so they're taking two to three months to decide. They're doing all this research. They're doing specs, prices, mile per gallon, how you compare, what your reviews are, how your Facebook looks, how easy your website is to navigate. They're, they're doing all this stuff. And then their first dealership that they're choosing to go into when they're ready to buy is the first dealership that they had the best experience with online. So um, the whole big thing with this and the reason why pay-per-click is so critical when you look at it advertising medium to advertising medium is the pay-per-click is literally the only advertising medium out there that you actually pay for performance. And one of, I'm going to give a really, really rough analogy about this, and I, I apologize about this, but I want to kind of uh, throw this into a little bit of like a direct mail idea. Because Matt, I'm sure most dealerships, if you're still not doing it, you've had a long, you know, back in the 90s or the early 2000s, did a lot of direct mail. I'm sure a lot of dealerships still do direct mail to their uh, current customer business. Uh, but let, just picture it this way, kind of to compare pay-per-click with direct mail. If, the, if a trunker came into your dealership, walked in your store right now, said, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Dealer, I want you to do direct mail with me. My list that I've got is all of people that have said that they want to buy a car that you have in stock right now. Would you say that's a good list? Obviously, yeah. yes, that's a great list. And then they say, well, we're gonna, we want to do 50,000 pieces of direct mail. You go, whoa, 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 that's a lot of money. That's a lot of mail that's been out there. Oh, oh no, no, Mr. or Mrs. Dealer, that, that, you're not going to pay for the 50,000. You're only going to pay for the people that actually respond. And that's the benefit of pay-per-click advertising. There's a ton of free advertising that's out there. So one of the things that I want to do to really put this pers into perspective and think about, and I want everybody to put their thinking caps on, think about the, uh, the targetability of all the different advertising mediums that you do. And, we, and I'm showing a simple screenshot, right? If a customer goes to Google and if they type in Honda Accord, what percentage of those customers that type in Honda Accord does everybody think is either, are, are those customers looking to buy that Honda Accord? What percentage are looking to sell it? And what percentage of those customers are looking to service a Honda Accord? And the, really, if you start thinking outside the box, like, you know, what are other things that a customer could do if they're typing a Honda Accord? Are they looking for a Honda Accord calendar? Uh, probably doubt it, you know? So, like, really, if a customer goes and Googles one of the vehicles that you have, they're looking to buy it, they're looking to sell it, they're looking to service it. And that's the business that you're in. It's the most targeted uh, thing that's out there. 
So this leads me to uh, my next question, which is going to be an awesome question, which I'm really, really curious about. And I'm going to turn this back over to Eliana because we've got another poll question in here for everybody. I want to see what everybody's answers are. <laughs> He's getting very excited about this. Okay, everyone, if you could look at your screen, the next question is, what is your average monthly pay-per-click budget? So you don't have to tell us the exact budget, just give us a roundabout idea on what you're spending per month on your pay-per-click budget. So is it $250 to $2,500, $2,500 to $5,000, $5,000 to $10,000, or more than $10,000? Or maybe you haven't set up your pay-per-click budget yet, and that, my friends, is why you're here today, which we can appreciate. Right, Jason? Yep. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Almost everyone's already voted already. Wow, you guys already know. I thought you'd have to look it up. I said, Jason, are you sure? He's like, no, they'll know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a car dealer. They know exactly where They know exactly going. how much they spend on everything. Okay, well, let's check okay. it out. Now, this is going to be, I think this is going to be surprising to you, Jason. But I'm going to share the I results I think everybody's in that 0 to 2,500 range. <laughs> oh, my God, you were right. 42% of our attendees today are spending $2,500 or less on their pay-per-click budgets right now. But there's a strong percentage of people, 29% of our attendees, are spending between $2,500 and $5,000. We have 11% of our attendees, $5,000 to $10,000, very healthy budget. No one is spending more than $10,000. And we have 18% of our attendees today that have not set up their pay-per-click budget just yet. So awesome. that, that, that goes about... That's right. Although I did expect somebody to say they were spending more than ten thousand, I think. Yep, um, that that does not surprise me. Um, uh, that doesn't surprise me at all, because uh, we deal with uh, dealerships. You know, obviously their pay per click budgets uh, on, on a on a daily basis. I want to put this in a proper perspective so everybody knows what a what the market's doing and what you should be doing. Okay. Now, w we talked about the targetability, <clears throat> right? My, the average dealership, and this again is kind of come from full service side, average dealership is spending about $62,000 uh, total. Uh, and I know that's, that's going to be short for some dealerships, that's going to be a massive number for a lot of dealerships, but this is over the course of you know, nationwide scale, everything from small mom-pop stores all the way up to massive dealerships. And the average dealership right now is also spending $21,000 on their electronic media, which would be uh, television, cable, and radio. Um, the average dealership is uh, spending about $3,200 in their search marketing budgets. And this is um, a month, right? Search this marketing budget. Wait, what's that? I said this is per month, right? Yes, this is per month. Okay. Yep. And, and so what we, when you think about the targetability, just take a Super Bowl ad, for instance, which everybody knows is the number one rated uh, TV commercial. 34% of the total population watches the Super Bowl. When you sit down and you actually pair into, okay, what's the percentage of people that are watching a Super Bowl that are actually looking for a car this month? And it, it roughly comes out to about 0.17% of the total population that would even see a, two, a Super Bowl ad, the number one watch Super Bowl ad, only about 0.17% of those customers would actually be in the market for a vehicle that month. And if we go back, and I want to go back to this one, if we say that a Honda Accord, if a customer is typing that in, and let's, let's throw out a small number. Let's say that it's only 60% of those people that are typing in Honda Accord that that's targetability, that, the, that are, they're in the market to either buy, sell, or service a Honda Accord. When we take a look at this stat, and these dealerships are spending that amount of money on marketing, um, we think that there's a better way to do it. We don't want to increase your budget. We want you to still spend that 62 grand. We want to take just 10% of your electronic media budget, take it away from there, and re-put that into your search engine marketing budget for an average cost of about $5,300. Primary reason is because of targetability, because you're only paying for performance because you're only paying for a customer that says that they want to buy, sell, or service a car that you got. And that's, that's the primary reason why we, we try to switch dealerships into investing more and more money in their search engine marketing budgets. Um, so with that, the whole entire thing about digital and search engine marketing is it's the most highly targeted advertising medium that's available, hands down. Uh, there's tons of free advertising. Because when a customer goes and Googles something, if they see your ad show up, and they don't click on it, it doesn't cost the dealership anything. You only pay for performance, so you only pay for the customers that are actually clicking. Uh, you're only advertising towards people that look for you. You can track results. We're going to show that in a minute. We've got 84% of auto searchers are using the Internet. 
You know, you can target only your market. You're in complete control of your budget, and everything's fully customizable if you're working with the right vendor. So that's that's kind of that. And one of the things that we want to do real quick with this right now is now we want to really get into kind of the meat and potatoes and, and talk about what new technologies are out there. But we've got a question I want. Um, so Eliana, where, do they need to go to the Google Plus page to answer this, or where are they answering this question at? Eliana? Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking and I was on mute. Um, I was going to say, Jason, what we're going to do is we're, they're going to do it right through the question feature right here. They don't have to go online or anything like that. So all we have to do is look at the question. One in three would give away their TV before giving away their, and the first one who writes in is going to win a prize. Oh my gosh, we already have a winner. That was crazy. We have two winners. I don't know if we can give two prizes, but first person. We can give two prizes away. Oh yeah, got, all right, cool. T-shirts, right. water bottles, a whole bunch of different stuff. Who, who, who was it that answered right? First person to answer right was... Erica Allen. Correct answer was cell phone. We also had Jenna Arcari wrote in cell phone, Ray Evans wrote in cell phone, and Zachary Smith wrote in cell phone, and we had some other interesting answers too. <laughs> I wonder if those, I'm, I'm going to have to take a poll then and see if those dealerships went to one of our Digital Summit boot camps. <laughs> I don't know if we have some cheaters in the room. <laughs> Well, That's I don't awesome. know. I don't know. But no, thank awesome. you for playing our game. I wish we had some, you know, uh, game show music behind us. <laughs> okay, uh, no, people are writing great. in. They said no boot camp. But you know what? You're right. I would not give away my cell phone. <laughs> No, I throw my TV out the window before I gave away my cell phone too, and that's that's the big thing. So we so we got to talk about mobile, right? Mobile is something that like literally two years ago, year and a half ago, we're everybody's kind of avoiding. Like, yeah, mobile's growing. Yeah, we know we know mobile's being it's really good for like if you're looking for a gas station or if you're looking for a bank or if you're looking for a restaurant, but it doesn't really work in the car business. Those days are over. Mobile, the important of mobile is that we got to understand the growth. Okay. Upwards of 20% of all searches are conducted on mobile devices now. Google is saying, and this number staggers me, but Google is saying that within inside the next 36 months, that mobile searches are going to exceed desktop searches. So the biggest thing, that, that's obviously the industry is growing, right? But the real thing that we got to sit down in, and this is one of those things that I, you know, if you're working with a vendor right now and you're you're part of the you know the 65 percent of your of the dealerships that are out there that are right now doing pay-per-click congratulations you guys are awesome what, you need to talk to your vendor about their mobile pay-per-click because it's critical and this is the primary reason why if you can take one thing away from this seminar it's this one 54 percent of mobile searchers intend on calling or visiting a local business more than one out of every two people that searches for your store on their smartphone are looking to call you or come in. Tell me a place that you can advertise more effectively than that. The other thing about this is when you sit down and you take a look at the conversions, and I want to I want to dispel a big myth. Conversions, in our opinion, is only phone call or email form submission. Okay? When you're looking at conversions, mobile searches are 66% more likely to convert than a desktop search. Hmm. So if you've got extra money that you want to spend, or if you're not seeing the results from your current pay-per-click, or if you're wondering if your display advertising is just wasting money, get your vendor that you're working with right now to get you into mobile. And one of the other things that you really have to understand about this, though, is mobile is way different than desktop searches. Simple, simple facts, right? Think about it. Searches contain 20% fewer, fewer characters than desktop searches. Think about how much easier it is to type a long-tail keyword term on your desktop than how much difficult it is to you know sit there and punch it in on your iPhone. It, mobile searches have a two keyword sweet spot. Most of your paid, uh, keywords that you bid upon, you want them to be two words or less. Mobile searches show more local content. Uh, and then when you sit down and you take a look at the results, and, and this I'm burning through this real quick, but when you when you're talking about a paid search on a desktop, there are actually ten uh, ads that show up on a desktop search. When you're looking at mobile, there's only five. And if you can see this, I don't know if everybody can really tell this, but the big thing with mobile is that there are only two uh, ad positions that, that run above the SEO fold. So you have to optimize your mobile to be in these number one or this number two slot. Otherwise, people aren't scrolling all the way down to the bottom and trying to find you down there. 
you got to dominate this. It's much different than desktop searches. So you also need to make sure that your vendor is, is making sure that they're uh, se separating out in their AdWords campaign the mobile searches from the desktop because they're completely different animals, completely different uh, responsibilities, completely different keywords, completely different customers, completely different conversions. It, it's, it's a critical thing, but mobile is the thing that, that, that is the fastest growing segment in the business, in the industry, and it's here for the car dealerships. Um, and so just, uh, I'm things. sorry to interrupt you, uh, but we did have a, a very, very quick question regarding that from Zachary. Yeah. He, he just wanted to make sure he understood. He says, is Google Mobile SEM placed at the bottom of the SERP on mobile devices? So you're saying two, only two, are at the top, and that means that the other three are at the bottom? Yes, the other three are at the bottom. So if, ever, if, if you want to see it for yourself, just pull out your smartphone, everybody, and just Google you know, Ford dealerships in your area or whatever store you want. You'll see that there are two ads that show up at the very top above the SEO fold, and then if you take your screen and you literally scroll it up, you know, and you go all the way down towards the bottom, there's three more ads that show up all the way down at the bottom. Got it. And are they shaded like it is on, you know, your computer screen too? Yes. Okay. And that's why I was saying, I don't know if, if this uh, PowerPoint's showing that, but yeah, right here, this, these areas right here are shaded. So they are shaded on the desktop or on the mobile applications just like they are on the desktop. Okay, great. Okay, Zachary, I hope that answers your question. Okay, please continue. I'm sorry to interrupt. No problem. No problem. So one of the other things that when you're talking about new technologies and stuff that are available, for some of the dealerships that have been in the SEM game for a while, this isn't necessarily a new technology. But there, I'm surprised at the amount of stores that, that don't know about uh, something that would be used car dynamic campaigns. Okay. What I want to do real quick is I'm actually going to like get out of this screen real quick, and I want to pull up um, a Google screenshot, <clears throat> and I want to show everybody what like a uh, you know a screenshot is of a used car dynamic campaign and why it's important. So right here we've got more of a short tail keyword. We've got used Jeep Wrangler for sale, right? And if a customer goes to Google and they type in used Jeep Wrangler for sale, obviously that person's looking to buy that car, right? When you sit down, you take a look at the organic activity, right? And again, these are the paid search ads, these top three and over here on these right-hand sides. So don't pay attention to the paid search section yet. But look down here towards the bottom of this when you look at the organic for what Google pulls up in the organic section. they got cars for sale, autos at Yahoo, car gurus, auto trader, autos at AOL, motor trend, automotive.com, lemon free, autos.nj, kellybluebook.com. And if anybody can't put two and two together, what's missing in there is there's not a single car dealership's website. Those are all third-party sites, right? And so when you sit down and you go, just, just think about logically. We still believe that dealership should do Auto Trader. We believe that dealership should do those type things because it's absolutely a fact that customers are going there. It's not a pitch against those. You should be doing that. But when you sit down and you go, what's more likely to convert a customer that's on one of the third-party sites uh, where they're seeing my inventory and every other dealership's inventory nationwide? or what's more likely to convert a customer that's on my site looking at just my inventory, then you can see like where you should be spending your money. The only way to get your ad to show up or get your dealership on the front page of Google for a search that this highly likely to convert for this customer that's looking to buy a Jeep Wrangler is to be able to do used car dynamic advertising. And so this is an example of Perkins Motors. Uh, you got six in stock, full and full online prices starting at 10879 there are companies out there that uh, have the capabilities to pull your dealership's inventory feed uh, to advertise how many you got in stock and to literally be able to pull what the price point is from that uh, from your inventory feed. And when I say dynamic, that means that it changes every single day as your inventory changes. So it updates daily without the dealership having to do anything. And for the old school um, car dogs in the business, this is like creating a liner for the internet except for you're only advertising towards people who are looking for the cars you got in stock, and uh, you're not having to sit around and figure out which vehicles you think are the most attractive. You're only going to show an ad when a customer says they want to buy one of the cars that you got. And so that's one of the most powerful things that's out there because that helps fulfill that void uh, that SEO really can't cover. And, um, and, and that's, a, that's an important uh, piece of that whole entire campaign too. So. Um, that's one of the new technologies that's available out there is these dynamic campaigns. When you take a look at the stats, they got 382% better performance than used vehicle SEO, 158% wow. performance uh, better than non-dynamic SEM, and a huge thing is the reduction in clicks because there are companies out there that work and do a system called deep linking. And what deep linking does is that when a customer clicks on that uh, ad, it deep links the customer right to the dealership's website to look right at those Jeep Wranglers. And so when you're talking about how to give a consumer a good online shopping experience, think about yourself 
think about your children, think about your husband or wife, think about how they shop, and think about how impatient they are. If you're not getting to what you want to get to in one click, you're leaving. And so that's why that used vehicle dynamic thing is a huge critical portion to helping dealerships sell used cars. Um, so now what we also want to do is we kind of want to talk a little bit about uh, display and remarketing. Display and remarketing is a very, very sexy uh, uh, thing that's in the business right now. However, display and remarketing does not necessarily have the same ROI as what Search and Mobile does. And when you sit down and you take a look at, you know, display and remarketing in general, and for those of you that don't know, display ads are basically the banner ads that you see um, that are like the graphic actual ads that you see when you're searching online. Remarketing and retargeting is when a customer has gone to your website and you're literally internet stalking them with ads from your dealership. It's like advertising towards, uh, towards people that have already been to your website, which is a very, very important thing to do, but you also have to figure out how much of money that, you got, that you're coming to the table with and what's going to give you as a dealership the best return on your investment. And this, this is what I kind of want to dispel with this because there's, there, there are a lot of uh, platforms and companies out there that have this really, really sexy spin about how important display and remarketing is, and I do think they're critical to a dealership, but they're not critical to a dealership that's only coming to the table with $500 as a pay-per-click budget. So when you take a look at you know, uh, this, the first thing that you want to do, and we all talk about the sales funnel cycle, dealerships talk about this all the time, you talk about the low funnel people that are in the market right now. That's where you want to focus your attention first with your budget. Uh, the second thing is you want to focus your attention with your engagements. How are you getting customers to engage on your website? Are they spending a lot of time on your website? Are they, uh, you know, are they bouncing off immediately? Are they building vehicles? Are they, are they visiting your maps and directions? What engagement things are you tracking? Third thing is you want to talk about the cost per thousand, about, you know, uh, about the CPMs and how many customers are actually seeing your dealership's ad. And that's where display really comes into. Search is when you're capturing the customer that's ready to buy right now. Retargeting is where you're getting that customer is just about ready to buy a car. Display is where you're going after those high funnel customers. So literally, if you're trying to figure out how to spend your budget, you go, man, there's mobile, there's display, there's remarketing, there's social, there's all these different things. Where do I spend my money? Start off with your search budget. Because that's the place that's going to return your investment, going to make your needle move the, the hardest. And so display and retargeting, just to talk a little bit about it, the, the best vendors that are out there have options. And the best vendors that are out there educate you. And so you can do tons and tons of different things, but a lot of, a lot of things, too, you pretty much can accomplish almost anything that you want to through the GDN, which is called the Google Display Network. The reason why you can accomplish anything you want is because it reaches almost 9 out of 10 uh, of the Internet users in the, uh, in the United States. There's over 1 million uh, publishers, and there's 211 million unique users per week that are running through the Google Display Network. Google Display Network is literally tons and tons of different websites. So you can do advanced targeting, you can do keyword contextual targeting, uh, topic, place your behavioral targeting, you can do all these different things. The vendor that you choose should be able to give you custom creative to make you stand out from the other dealerships in your market. We all know that it's more and more difficult today to be different, you know? Uh, a, a great, I mean, look how great Kia is. Look how great their vehicles are. Look how, look how well built that they are. I mean, uh, you know, not to put them in the same perspective, but, you know, a, a, a Kia versus a Mercedes in the late 80s, early 90s was a much wider gap than a Kia and a Mercedes today. You know, so you've got to do things digitally to help separate yourself. Um, there's also things you can do with Facebook and display and a whole bunch of different stuff because Facebook is here. There's different things you can do in there with display advertising on Facebook. You can do uh, fan generation where you try to increase the people that like you. A whole lot of different things that you guys can do. But the primary thing is that when you're sitting down and trying to focus on your budgets, because this is probably, Eliana, this is probably the biggest question that we handle on a daily basis, is how do you spend your money? <laughs> well, the, what we try to tell a dealership is we want to own your search first. When a customer's going to Google, going to Bing, going to Yahoo, and when they're typing in saying that they want to buy a car that you got, that's where we want them to own that, right? Own your mobile second because of those conversion ratios, because more than one out of two, two, two people are looking to call you or visit you. Own your mobile second. Let your remarketing ads really start to work. And then, really, if you're focusing, you've got extra budget, do your display. Uh, you know, so those dealerships that are doing five grand and more, they should definitely be doing display. They should definitely be doing remarketing. Um, so you can also do things through YouTube and a bunch of other channels as well. And we're not going to talk too much about that, but that's kind of the hierarchy. And this hierarchy is literally because search gets you the best uh, uh, return on investment, mobile gets you the second, remarketing gets you the third, display gets you the fourth. Right? Pretty simple. So... 
that leads us to the final question, and this, and we're almost wrapping this up, and I thank everybody so much for your time. I'm excited to do the question and answer session with you guys here in a second. I hope this has been really educational. Um, but we've got one more poll question that we want to run out to you guys just to kind of get a feel for, for uh, what's important to you guys as far as tracking. So, Eliana? Ah, uh, well, when it comes to tracking, this is the question that we really wanted to know from you, our audience. So if you could, please look at your screen one last time and check out the question that we have on the screen for you right now. So if you had your choice, how would you prefer to track your pay-per-click campaign in order to gauge its success? We're very curious what you think. So would you like to track it by clicks, by impressions, by new website traffic? Is it email form submissions and phone calls that get you going, or do uh, you just want it all? Are you greedy? You want it all? You want to be able to track it by everything? <laughs> all of the above is also one of the answers available to you. So please let us know what you think, and once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results. I know what I would want. <laughs> I have I to say... Everything, but I know that they, well, I, I want to see what everybody says. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, well, we're still waiting for some more some more uh, uh, votes, but I do want, <laughs> people are writing in, this is a trick question. No, Ray, it's not a trick question. <laughs> but um, uh, I have to say, you've had some pretty astounding stats in this webinar. I mean, some really eye-opening stats, and people have been asking I have a lot of questions regarding those stats, so I'm just giving you the heads up right before we get to the, the question and answer part. So I like it. All right, all right. Guess what? We're going to close the poll and share the results. 75% of our online attendees today, they want it all. They want everything. They want all of the above and a banana split with a cherry on top. I'm sure. Now, 19% right. <laughs> 19 of our attendees today say email form submissions and phone calls are the way to go. 3% think new website traffic is always great. 3% say clicks, and no one said impressions. Interesting. I like it. I like, I love, I love, I love the car, I love the car business. I really I do. I can sell. <laughs> and I love car dealerships because I, I know that they want it all. The cool thing is, is there are companies out there that do have it all. Now, the, the vendor that you choose, there's a lot of great vendors out there, right? And one of the first and foremost things I just want to highlight for everybody when you're in, just, when you're in decisions about who to choose uh, is that transparency is going to be critical to trusting your vendor, okay? Um, there's a lot of different ways that uh, clients or companies, vendors, charge uh, dealerships to handle their search budgets. A lot of them do percentages, uh, uh, but I am still surprised uh, at how many different vendors out there don't just sit down and show a dealership what they're doing. Google AdWords is one of the primary things that you should be asking your vendor if they'll show you, because your Google AdWords account is what every single vendor, myself, any of the, my competitors, any if a you know, your, uh, your, your son's girlfriend that just graduated college is getting into FDM and she's running out of her basement. She's running, if they're doing pay-per-click ads, they're doing it through Google AdWords. So people and vendors should be open to showing you the transparency on that. And one of the biggest things that we want to talk about, too, is that your online reporting should not only collect data, but it should do something with that data to make your search better, right? Because it's great if we can see, oh, yeah, I got, you know, I got this many clicks, I got this many impressions, I got this many emails, great, sounds good, but, but how do you actually start to invest your money towards keywords and towards things that are giving you a better engagement and a better conversion ratio on it? And there are companies out there, um, there's, this is probably the newest technology that I do want to introduce a lot of people to, because most people don't have any clue that this actually exists. Keyword level call tracking. Now, keyword level call tracking, there's a lot of companies out there that they can do what are called keyword group call tracking, where they can say that your regional terms got you X amount of phone calls, or your dealership's branded terms got you X amount of phone calls. But there are software systems now that are available that you can actually track what a customer searches for specifically and then calls them. And, if, and to really kind of make this everybody think through to this, imagine yourself right now sitting at your desktop typing in, uh, you know, whatever search, uh, used car, best place to buy a used vehicle under $10,000 in Idaho, right, or something. 
And then you type that in your desktop, and then that customer that types it in picks up their landline and they call your dealership and call the phone number that's on your dealership's website. There are ways out there now to be able to track that phone call all the way down to and back to what keyword they actually typed in into Google. And again, it's not only about recognizing that, but there are also other platforms that are out there now that they have what's called paths to conversion. Because when we go back to that slide that was way earlier in the presentation, when we talked about the average customer, 84% of shopping online, visiting one store, and more than 50% uh, of those customers are in the, I can't remember the stat now exactly if without looking at it, but a huge number of them are sitting there and, and researching over two to three months. The average customers are doing multiple searches. They're getting to your website a bunch of times. So it's not only about recognizing what the final uh, keyword that they typed in that made them call you was, but it's about being able to track all of the keywords that that customer types in. There's software systems out there that can track customers' uh, browsers uh, through cooking. And when a customer gets there multiple times, recognize all the keywords and then attribute the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the phone call conversion to all of the keywords and then if you are working with a real elite company, they've got the capabilities to actually start investing your money, your Google pay-per-click money, your 0 to 2500 or 25 to 5 or however much money that you're spending in your actual search budget. There are companies out there that can now spend your money towards the keywords that are causing the most conversions, right? So um, this is an example of some of those paths to conversion reportings. I'm just going to click on here real quick, and it shows like some of the software systems that are out there. This customer deals their three different search terms, Honda CRV brains in Florida, Honda CRV, Honda CRV used 2010. You can see all the different search terms that a customer types in and then start to invest your money towards these keywords because they were involved in that call. And that's a critical portion to be able to take, you know, for the dealerships in the room right now that are spending that five to ten grand, if you don't have that type of software and you're that aggressive, this is something that will take you to the next level. And um, so that's it. I'm done. I'm sweating over here. You're so. not done, dude. Let me tell you. <laughs> we got a bunch of questions? I, oh, I my gosh. We have so many questions. And I just, right, want, I, I just want to preface it by saying, first of all, you must have done a, a, a fabulous job. And I'm sure everyone who's on this webinar agrees because they are sending in questions fast and furious. And although it is only a few minutes before the top of the hour, if you'll stick with us, attendees, we're going to try and get to all of these questions if Jason, if you're ready. I'm here, and I want to thank everybody real quick for all your time. I know, man, a, a dealership's time is extremely valuable. That went a little longer than normal than we had planned, so I apologize about that. But thank you guys for your time. And also, I do want to say that if you guys want to reach me out directly, don't hesitate to email me. My email's up on the screen right now, jason at haystack.com. If you've got want some more personal service or talk to me after this or anything like that, feel free to do so, too. Yes, and, and also, attendees, don't forget, this webinar is being recorded, and I will be sending you a link to the recording once I get it posted later on today. Okay, so let's get started. We have a ton of great questions. By the way, we only have, so far, one person answering our Google Plus question, which was for them to share their most successful pay-per-click tip or trick, and that would be hey, to... Hey, you know why that is? Why? You know why that is? Why? Most of these dealerships don't even know what Google Plus is. Oh, y'all need to y'all need to get on the bandwagon and start researching Google Plus. By the way, <laughs> well, I did want to say the only answer is Jim Bell, who kind of cheated because he says I just let Haystack do it and it works. Smiley face. So thank you, Jim, for that. <laughs> that wasn't exactly what we were looking for. <laughs> uh, Jim Bell. I know. I know. Yeah. Okay. I, I seriously, I have a lot of questions. So Jason, I'm going to ask you to answer as quickly and as as completely as possible, okay? Okay, sounds good. Okay, Rock. let's start with a very simple one. This one comes from Jane. How much does a click cost? <laughs> That's not the simple. It sounded question. simple. I think that sounds yeah. simple. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the answer to that is there's no actual dollar figure about how much a specific click costs. Um, there is a wide range. Uh, the pay-per-click business, you almost have to think about it like an eBay auction where uh, other dealerships in your market are actually bidding upon those costs and, and bidding upon the keywords. So we, or any vendor that you choose to work with, the vendor themselves doesn't necessarily dictate what your cost per click is, your market does. Other dealerships in your area that are bidding upon the same keywords, uh, you know, uh, I'll set that up for you guys. And so you have to bid against them. Now, 
there are a lot of control and quality control issues. And when we get into way more kind of the deep level targeting in there and, and more of the education with the store, and I'm not going to go far into this, but there's things that Google does to kind of even the level playing field. And one of those big things is called a quality score index. And a quality score index is basically how Google rewards good ads that are relevant, that have the deep link the proper way, that uh, you know, are, are engaging to the customers, that have a high click-through ratio. There's all these different uh, things that you can do to get a lower cost per click. Um, and so one of the things that you do want to focus on is like if, if a dealership has a budget, let's say they've got $1,000, you do definitely want to have the, the lowest cost per click as you possibly can, but you also want to make sure that you're getting your, your clicks higher up on the ad rank position. So you know, just real quick, when we go back to this search term right here, Typically, you got to think of Google like uh, real estate, uh, whereas you know these top three areas right here, these are the prime real estate. This is oceanfront property, right? It's these three right here. When you scroll over here and you get down here in this section, these are kind of the ghetto. I don't want to say it that way, but that's, <laughs> these are going to cost less than these clicks up here. So it's not only about uh, what your cost per click, but it's going to be uh, get a cost per click and get it as high up on this list into the prime real estate po uh, place as possible. Your vendor that you work with, if they can't educate you on this real quick and real easy, you need to get another vendor. Well, there you have it. Jane, I hope that helps you out. Next question comes to us from Jenna. She writes in, what companies do the dynamic campaigns? I'm just going to go out on a limb and say Haystack probably does it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to say uh, we're not the only ones. Um, I, this, this is really supposed to be educational for everybody, so I'm, I, I don't want to plug us. Uh, there's about two uh, that do those dynamic. Uh, actually, on the top of my head, there's actually about three companies that do the dynamic campaigns. But the, those three companies, uh, and actually, I don't, I don't care. The, the other two companies are Dealer.com that I know of and Search Optics, uh, and actually not uh, Dealer.com and AdLogix, excuse me. So those are the other two companies. Um, there are massive differences between the ways that we all run those. And uh, I do feel that if you want to, um, uh, both of those companies, Search Opt or uh, AdLogix and Dealer.com are great companies, okay? Great companies, great leaders. I know the, the leaderboards of those positions, they're, they've got good products, they've got, you know, they're good vendors. Uh, if you ever want to know the difference between the two of them, I don't want to talk about it right now. Uh, but, uh, Jenna, if you want to email me directly, I'll give you a very, very uh, concise and very, very quick uh, answer on what makes uh, ours different uh, towards those. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Jason. And Jenna, Jason at Haystack.com. All right. Next question comes to us from, I hope I'm saying his name right, Ingi? I hope it's Ingi. <laughs> he says, fact. 66% more likely to convert on mobile than desktop was something that you had said earlier, Jason. His question is, is that across all industries or just the automotive industry alone? That stat is across all industries. And that stat is also depends upon um, what keyword terms it is that you're, that you're bidding upon. Uh, you know, as an example, uh, you know, you also have to look at um, you also have to look at very specifically like what keywords you're setting those things up for, right? Right. And when you sit down and you take a look at uh, like the average car dealership, and I'll just give you an example. If somebody goes to their desktop or their mobile search and they type in a high funnel search term, you know, and a, a, a high funnel search term would be something like um, mile per gallon rating of a Toyota Highlander, right? Right. They're researching that car. They're probably not going to convert yet at that point because they're they're just researching, and vice versa. If you sit down and you do a you know a, a term that's more likely to convert, like Toyota Highlander for sale, that person's looking to buy that car. Uh, that person's going to be a lot more likely to convert than the person that says Toyota Highlander mile per gallon. Uh, there's also other things. You know, you got to take a look at service and parts that's included in there because a proper vendor that works with you is not only going to help you sell new cars, they're going to help you sell used cars, they're going to help you move uh, your service and parts department too. And also, like a lot of customers that, you know, type in like oil changes for, you know, whatever area, those people are looking to convert right now, right? Um, need my tires rotated. Those, that's a conversion that's going to happen right now. So that, that stat is across all industry verticals. And a vendor that works for you specifically in the auto industry, 
Um, and again, actually, th those stats those from Google on those things, those do come from all verticals. But I do want to say that the only vertical that we work in is just car dealerships. So I'm not as familiar with other verticals as I am, obviously, car, uh, car dealerships, because that's all we do. Um, but if you have a limited budget, again, the main thing is what we want to do is we want to focus our keywords on going after the customers that are at that lower funnel cycle to have you get, guys get a higher conversion ratio, because when we move the needle, then we can come back to you later on and go, okay, now that we've moved that needle and you're selling more cars, now we need to really start getting you into doing some more of the mid-level engagement and the high-level uh, display type of stuff to even start attracting more and more buyers. Inky, I great hope that question. answered your question. And Yeah, it was a great question. And Jason, thank you so much. That was an excellent answer. Uh, if you have a follow-up question, please let me know. I want to get through as many of these questions as possible. Next question comes to us from Zachary. He says, are mobile SEM based on where the phone is physically at? That's a great question. Is it, I mean, how, if I, you know, have my cell phone and I'm, you know, four towns over, do the ads change because of my physical location of where I am? Or is it where my phone is usually based at? Uh, great question. Uh, there's a, there's several different technologies that are involved in there. There's you know for instance, um, if you take a look at uh, one of the things that I got with the last Google Summit that I was with in San Francisco is they were talking about how like retailers like Target uh, and Kmart and these you know absolutely big time retail stores. What they're starting to do is they have they can do targeting to customers that are driving by the uh, the Target like the the business like the shopping center Target. If a customer is driving by it they can show that customer an ad for like a discount on toilet paper. What? Right? Really? <laughs> yeah. No, that, that, absolutely. And, do, and, and that's really dependent upon the customer obviously having their cell phone up and activated and having their GPS activated on their cell phone. Right. Primarily what we want to do is we do want to target the, uh, the we set up the geo uh, areas. And one of the things that if you really want to get into it in the detail is it's not only about where the customer is physically located, uh, hitting up the people that have their GPS is activated, but it's also about knowing where that customer got their phone actually activated and like um, and what cell phone towers it is. So most of that stuff actually comes from advertising towards the cell phone towers that are closest to that area. So it is very targeted. You can still geotarget. You can still set it up so that you say, you know, I don't want an ad. If I'm in Tennessee, I don't want an ad to show for uh, when a customer is driving through uh, Colorado, you know. So you can still geotarget and say where you want your bulk majority of your ads to be shown, and but most of that's actually based upon cell phone towers and where the customers are at. Well, thank you for that. And by the way, I forgot to mention this earlier, but I want you all to know that if you missed it, last week, and Jason, you know this, last week we had a great webinar just on mobile strategies. And they you know, our speaker was actually from Google, it was Eli Romberg from Google, and he did, in fact, for a short time, talk about mobile SEM. So if you want to check that out, it's posted on www.dealeron.com slash webinar. And through there, you can find the recording from last week's webinar. It was a really great webinar. So yeah, I watched that too, and they, he put he went a lot more into detail than what we did on the mobile stuff. So I really, really recommend everybody going and checking that out. Eli's great. Um, I know him personally. Uh, very, very smart person. Has a lot of really good data and stuff on there. Yes, he, he was great and very, very highly rated. Everyone loved him. So I, definitely a great webinar if you if you did in fact miss it. Okay, lots of questions to get to. Next one comes from Tom. He says, "Can a dealership?" run a retargeting campaign directly through Google by themselves on a small scale, or is that a vendor-only feature? No, absolutely. A dealership can do that themselves, absolutely. It, AdWords, Google AdWords and how you run it, uh, look into Google AdWords. Um, like, literally, when you go, if you, bit, if you uh, Google, you just type in Google AdWords, right? If you go to Google, Google it. Uh, and you sit down and you take a look at it, um, Google AdWords, online advertising, you as a dealership can go through and set this up yourself. Um, it is a, uh, it's, it's a free service. It does not cost you anything whatsoever. Uh, I highly recommend it. Another thing that I would recommend for a dealership that has a very, very small budget is looking into Google AdWords Express, okay? Um, this is a product that, again, does not cost you anything. It's not a vendor-specific process or anything like that. Google AdWords Express is a uh, is a system where you can contact Google. You can tell them I'm, 
you know, I'm uh, uh, Eliana's BMW in uh, <laughs> Washington, D.C., and Google will actually go and, say, and create those, and you can say, I've got $500 to spend, and they'll go spend your money for you. Um, but if you want to do display advertising and all that stuff, you're also talking about, uh, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, you're talking about, obviously, this, designing those display ads, making sure they're the proper sizes, making sure they're engaged. Do you want it to be flashed? Do you not want it to be flashed? Where do you want those display ads to run? How much of a budget do you got? Do you want to do behavioral retargeting? Do you want to do contextual retargeting? Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that go into it. Uh, yes, you can do it by yourself, and it will be difficult. Um, so, but yes, you absolutely can. So for that, uh, for Tom, I would say look into Google AdWords and look into Google AdWords Expressor. Thank you, Jason. Tom, if you have any follow-up questions, you can either write them in or contact Jason at jason at haystack.com. Let's go on to the next question. Ray has a great question, too. He says, how would you divide your budget between Google, Bing, and Yahoo? Ray, you're a sneaky little fellow. Okay. <laughs> Because I, I wouldn't even have thought that. Um, now, first of all, it is, it's a great question. Earlier you said Google has like a 70% market share. So when you said definitely do Google, do you think you should just do Google, just start out with Google? Or you really do think you know diversity is best, and yes, you should have a little bit with Bing and a little bit with Yahoo? I think diversity is best. And I also think that this, this question, if I, would, if I was to give you the stock uh, answer that is very, uh, it's BS, <laughs> I'd go 80% Google, 12% uh, Bing, 8% Yahoo, right? <laughs> Just based upon how customers search, but it's not that simple. It really, and one of the things that you've got to understand about all this is your, your vendor that you work with needs to understand your market, your dealership, who you sell to, your demographics, your budget. They need to understand all that stuff, and they need to come up with a proper game plan. I'll give you an example. You know, uh, if you're a Buick store and you are in, um, uh, you know, Naples, Florida, for example, your your market is a Buick store. Uh, you obviously have a little bit of a uh, an older demographic that you adhere to, and an older demographic typically goes towards Yahoo more than they do Bing or Yahoo or Bing or Google. So if you're that dealership in that market, you need to go a little bit and spend a little bit more more money towards Yahoo. Also, if you only have $1,000 to spend, uh, I wouldn't even really sit down and try to mess with Bing or Yahoo yet. And that, and that's, that's, um, and, but again, that depends because there are also stats that show that Bing and Yahoo, Bing especially, can get you a higher uh, conversion ratio uh, than what a lot of times, like, uh, you know, than Google can. And as, a, as an example, if you're a Highline BMW store, and, you know, a Highline BMW or Highline Mercedes-Benz store, a lot of people that go and Google, you know, BMW M3, for example, are 17-year-old kids that are looking to get a picture of it. And, you know, so you also have to understand, you really have to understand your dealership, your demographics, your market, and all that kind of stuff to be able to invest your budget. But if you're spending, I would say this, if your dealership is spending more than $2,500, uh, you, you should be partitioning off at least 20% of that towards both Bing and Yahoo, and you should be able to track the engagement and the performance of that. Um, and that's the primary thing, is that there's, the best thing that I can tell you is that you need to pick a vendor that has customer service that's going to talk and educate with you through this, um, because if that, that question is, is a fantastic question, but it's not something that has just a specific answer. Because like, let's say that we take off 20% of your budget, we invest it towards Bing and Yahoo, and you don't get any more leads, then it's not worth it. Well, you know, it's funny, Ray actually wrote back in and he says he is doing it himself and he's getting really good results and he says it's cheaper in Bing and Yahoo and he even put a smiley face. So he must be doing well with Bing and Yahoo. So, No, that's yeah. great. That's fantastic, <laughs> Ray. You, you're, you're in the, Ray, you're in the, uh, the small percentile of dealerships and that's, that's a fantastic thing to do. Keep up the good work, Ray. We have lots more questions to get to. How, how long do I have you for, Jason? <laughs> You got, I, I have booked out you know, this entire rest of the afternoon just for you, Eliana. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Let's see if we can get to this. This is a very interesting question. It actually came to us from more than one person, a very, very similar question. Bruce wrote in, with a $6,000 ad spend, how would you divide that between PPC, mobile PPC, remarketing, banners, UC PPC? And then we also had Chris who wrote in, and he said, considering spending eight to 10000 on PPC, how would you spend it? So basically the same thing, 
slightly different budgets, but people want to know, when you get over that, that $5,000 mark, is there some magic formula on, on how much you spend on mobile and how much you spend on remarketing and so forth? No. Oh, and gosh. Bruce, Sorry. Anybody else that asked <laughs> that, ask that question, if you guys want me to take a personal look in, at, and give you a personal consultation on it, email me. Um, because I'd be more than happy to do it. Uh, the reason why I say no, there's not an actual specific answer to that is because, again, it re really depends upon your market. And it really depends upon, now we get into a little bit more of a deeper level type of things. Like, um, you know, for instance, are you, is your dealership now, like with our software system, okay, and I'll just kind of, I'll, 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 and I'm, I'm so sorry to plug this, but I, I don't know how else to answer this other than just to kind of give a little shameless plug. With our software system, we've got the capabilities to customize this whole entire thing around whatever type of engagement level or for conversion ratio uh, goals that you as a dealership have. So as an example, th there are plenty of stores out there that they're wanting to dominate the impression share load on the display and the remarketing network. And so we optimize the site to be able to do that better, to give them more of an impression share, to dominate, to just constantly be branding and constantly be in front of a customer. That's, that is an important portion of it. Um, what we also want to do is we, we also have the capabilities to optimize your, uh, your website and all your pay-per-click spend specifically and only towards conversions. So as an example of that, um, what our system does is when we're talking about kind of like that keyword level call tracking, the back end side of our reporting tool will actually show you where the customers are coming from. And, and, and if you guys remember, we were able to track the customer's browser. Uh, and I can see where, when a, I can see all the ways that a customer gets to. So I can see if a customer got to you from paid search, if they got to you from your marketing ad, if they got to you from your display ad, if they got to you from your used ad, if they got to you from mobile, if they got to you from uh, Facebook. I can see how that customer got to you. And if we optimize your website and the performance of that to actually uh, optimize for conversions, then the software system is actually going to dilute the amount of money that we spend on the display network, which I don't think is necessarily the right way to do it for a dealership with a bigger budget. So the first thing that I got to do, and, that the, and, and so that's what we do, and, and so again, going back to whatever vendor that you're working with, your vendor, if they really know what they're doing, they got to talk to you about what your goals are. And they got to say, do you want more leads? Do you want more phone uh, calls? Do you want more of that? Or are you also interested in doing that more long-term marketing for it? And so um, I would love, Bruce, uh, to answer that question for you specifically. Um, if you could kind of give me, shoot me what type of dealership you are, where you're at, uh, what you're doing right now, uh, what type of results you go for, and are you going for impressions, are you going for time on site, what KPIs are you looking for, are you going for conversions, give me an idea of what you're looking for, and I can give you a very, very specific answer on that. Yes, both Bruce and Chris. So thank you so much, Jason, great answer. Okay, next question comes to us from Sam. He says, considering that factories and corporate spends big money on internet searches as well, are we smarter to invest a larger portion of our PPC budget on used vehicles or to compete with those big guys? This is from Sam. Oh, that, that's a great question. I want to, if everybody can see my screen, I want to get back to this real quick and go to like that Google search, right? So let's talk about kind of like a new car search term, right? We do Toyota dealers. Denver, right? Okay. When you go when you go into there and you type in you know Toyota dealerships or whatever brand it is that you have, um, a lot of times actually that's interesting. We didn't even get a. Let's type in just Toyota. Let's do a very general search term. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so uh, Sam, what Sam's asking about right there is really the the primary focus. Sam should be how much does it really cost to get you to to outbid the manufacturers in, the, in that number one spot. Jeez. And we often think, uh, and this depends upon the market, but we're, we typically try to bid a dealership for like the second or third area, for like one of these two uh, places right here on the ad rank. Because to Google, Toyota.com right now, this is ad rank position one. Buy Toyota is ad rank position two. So those are two different dealerships um, that, are, that are having, uh, uh, or two different uh, manufacturer websites, excuse me, that are having their places put up there. Toyota's pockets are obviously a lot deeper than anybody in this room and anybody that I know, you know. Um, so we try to bid for that position right there. But when you start doing those other searches, now that's for just a generic search, Toyota, right? You don't know if that customer is looking to buy a car, if they're looking to sell a car, if they're looking to, you know, find out information about Akio Toyota or any of this. You don't know what that customer is actually doing. So when you start getting a little bit more specific and you do Camry, 
for sale in Denver, right? Now what you wind up doing is the manufacturers are kicked out a little bit. The manufacturers aren't going after these types of terms. So again, it goes down to, Sam, how much money are you spending? I got stores, well, I got stores that are spending more money um, on their paid search and their and, and their full entire advertising thing on this level than um, than than what the industry averages for dealerships. Okay, and we've got um, so we with those guys we do try to compete. But again, with the smaller store, whatever we're going to try to focus your attention on bidding upon the keywords that we don't have to go that route for. And so there's just a whole lot of different things in there. We want to be able to you know cover basically the places that your SEO can't cover. We want to invest your money in the wisest way possible, and we want to be able to prove that to you by tracking those results and, and letting your market know. And one other thing that I do want to mention on this, because these, these questions are great, too, by the way. I know. Um, I, I told you, our, our attendees do not pull any punches. I mean, they, they really hit you hard. <laughs> I like it. I like it. The, um, the main thing that you need to do is that everybody needs to understand, guess what? A uh, customer in New York City shops a lot different than a customer in, uh, you know, Amarillo, Texas. And so when you're taking a look, the consumers do, your software and your vendor should be able to analyze your market and invest your money into the places that are getting you the highest return on investment based upon the engagement goals that you talk with and specify with your vendor. And I do want to say this, too. There are a lot of clients and there are a lot of companies out there that are, you know, if you're the type of dealership that just goes, I need to spend money, I need it going, I need it working, I need it pumping, then, then uh, you know, there's a lot of companies that are out there like that. But if you want to take it to the next level, you really have to choose a vendor that's going to be able to customize things for you. Um, and, and a lot of these questions are really those customized type of questions. Um, and as an example with us, every single uh, company that we or a dealership that we work with actually gets their own uh, individual Google Qualified Hours Professional and a Microsoft and Bing uh, ad professional that's been certified by both those channels, your customer service rep with me is the person that's actually working on your account. And if you want to just set it and forget it, we can take care of you on that level too. Well, so there you have question again, Sam, <laughs> pop me, pop me a, uh, an email if you want a little bit more of a, a deeper uh, a viewpoint on that. It's a great question, though. Great question, Sam. Uh, I have another great question for you, too. This one comes to us from Ray, and Ray is writing in, the cost per click on our remarketing campaigns seems to be a lot higher than regular pay-per-click. Thoughts? Uh, you're not doing it right. Hmm. Um, one thing would be, like, um, you know, uh, how's that company charging you? Are they charging you per thousand, or are they actually charging you for the click? Another thing that you need to really take a look at is what's your actual click-through ratio on those? Uh, what's your quality score index is on those? How relevant are those ads? Are you deep linking that customer? Um, like as an example, what, uh, El, El, Ray, is that a, or Eliana, did he say that was a remarketing ad or just normal display? The, C, the CPC on our remarketing campaigns seems to be a okay. lot higher than regular pay-per-click. Okay, so another thing is you, there's so many different facets of that. Are you taking that remarketing ad that you so like let's say the cus the page on your website that you're remarketing is your new uh, your new I don't know uh, Ford F-150 for an example. When a customer goes and they see their ad and they click on it, are you just dropping that customer back off onto your home page, or are you actually deep linking that customer into your F-150 page? Because every uh, the one thing that I want everybody to understand about the search engines is it's all about relevancy, right? Google, Bing, Yahoo, they're going to reward you with lower cost per clicks if you can make sure that every single thing is relevant. And what that means is that your ad that you show is relevant to exactly what they type in. Your ad that you show is relevant to, uh, you know, you have ad copy in here about that. You know, you have uh, you, the place that that customer goes to on your website is the most relevant page. You're deep linking them to your website to the most relevant page. The page they go to better have a lot of content about the search term that they had. Your web provider had better be doing a good job at making sure that your load page time is good, that you have a bunch of content, that your SEO is, is connected in the right way. There's a lot of different things about that that get you, um, uh, that, that get you a overall cost per click. And, and again, a vendor that knows what they're doing is going to be a vendor that can sit down and get you those high, high quality score indexes because if you get a high quality score index, Google will reward you with a lower overall cost per click. Great, 
Thank you for that, Ray. I hope that answered your question. Um, I got a technical question that came in from Markley. And Markley wants to know, what was that technology that allowed your used car inventory, i.e. five in stock starting at $10,500? Remember we saw that on an earlier search you did? I think it was for the Jeep Wrangler? Yep. Right. He says, is that something you can do through Google AdWords? Um, uh, you can if you've got a couple million dollars to invest in the research and technology to do it the right way. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Or, or you can, if you have one person at your dealership that's a Google AdWords professional that every day goes in and takes a look at your inventory feed and goes in and pauses all your campaigns and then goes in and creates new campaigns for every, and new ads. When I say campaigns, I mean ads. And creates new ads for every single vehicle that you have and then creates make and model groupings and you're making model groupings and just make groupings and then figures out what the price point is of the least expensive one and then creates ad copy that says, tells the customer how many you got in stock with what the price is and then makes sure that it deep links to the proper channel and then does all that stuff. So yeah, if you've got somebody that can do that and has the time to do that every day, yeah, you can do it. All right. If you don't, you need to get hooked up with a company that does that. That tech, like literally, if, if for anybody that's actually managed a campaign, if you think about what it takes to actually build an ad, you got to bid upon the keywords, you got to set them all up, you got to update the ad copy, you got to create the title line, you got to create the title tags, you got to put the U display URL, you got to make sure it deep links to the proper channel, and then on top of that, if you're having to justify and verify from your inventory feed which vehicles you got in stock and what the price is, and then and trust in creating that, literally, it's, it would be impossible if the dealership only has a hundred used cars in stock. It would literally be physically impossible for that dealership to do that on a daily basis. So the best solution with it is for uh, it to be done through technology. And so as an example, with our system, it's literally, I'm not going to go into the full details, but it's pulled from your feed because uh, it's proprietary, <laughs> right? But it's right. pulled from your inventory feed. And our software integrates directly with AdWords and it recognizes how many cars you got in stock, what the price is of the least expensive one. Any vehicle that you sell yesterday, that car will automatically be paused today. Any vehicle that you bring in trade or bring in from the auction or bring in from wherever uh, yesterday will automatically be created and at advertised today. Um, so there, there's ways uh, for technology to do things that it's literally impossible for humans to do. I'd say go ahead and experiment with it, uh, Markley, and then uh, if it gets too frustrating, call me. I think that's an excellent, excellent idea. Okay, we are way, way, way over time. I'm going to let you answer one last question before we get back to the PowerPoint and sign off with everyone, okay? Okay. Last question comes to us from Scott. I'm a small dealership and I only have a thousand dollars to spend. How would you recommend I spend it to get the most ROI? That's a tough question because a thousand dollars, you know, you're to a thousand dollars to some dealerships is a lot of money, you know, and yeah. they need it to give them the best bang for their buck. So, what would you yeah. do with a thousand dollars? I would take however many used vehicles he has in stock. I would multiply that number by about $8, and I would do that number for his used vehicle dynamic inventory listing because, again, we're going after very, very low funnel people. So if that dealership has, you know, and I don't know if, if I, just without really dissecting with them, but if he's got 40 used cars in stock, I would dedicate about $320 of that $40, or of those 40, of that $1,000, excuse me, I would dedicate about $320 of that towards his used vehicle dynamic inventory listing, and then... I would dedicate the additional $780 uh, very specifically towards only paid search and only towards uh, customers uh, looking for dealerships in his area, all of his new car model lines, regional terms, and I would definitely go after his competition as well and limit the, limit the keyword sets that we're going after with that and then let the software decide uh, based upon which keywords that we're bidding upon are converting at the highest ratio, then let the software start to invest his money towards the keywords that are generating the highest phone call and email form conversions. Well, I think that was a great answer, and I really hope that helped you out, Scott. And I know Scott's not the only one out there who, you know, wants to take a small budget and see what they can do with it and, and go on from there. Um, yeah. Jason, uh, seriously, incredible, incredible webinar. You love this stuff and you can completely tell how much passion you have for digital marketing so uh, we very much appreciate having you on the show today and gosh oh gosh I hope you'll consider doing another webinar with us again in the future because I think you did an absolutely amazing job and I hope absolutely. everyone out there agrees. That, 
It's absolutely my pleasure. Um, it's an important thing for dealerships in this day and age, and, and I just I just really want to thank everybody for their time. I, I mean, heck, we got an hour and a half almost in this bad boy. I got more time if everybody else does, but if anybody else doesn't, just feel free to shoot me an email. I, I definitely appreciate everybody's time. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> and we are going to, Haystack's going to be sending out directly some, some swag to some of the winners, right? I'll get you the list of those people who, uh, who answered the questions properly. Okay, Jason? Yep, absolutely. Ah, fantastic. Okay. Well, I want to remind the audience that a link to copy to download a copy of this webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. Share it with friends and colleagues. And today's webinar is also going to be posted online within 24 hours at dealeron.com slash webinar. And from there, you can view our upcoming webinar schedule, too, and access any of our past webinars. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar in just a few minutes, you will receive a short survey. Fill it out as we're always looking for great feedback from you. And we're going to randomly select some winners from all the completed surveys to also win some Haystack swag. So hopefully we'll see your feedback in there today. Now, next week's webinar. Jason? <laughs> there you go. I want to tell everyone about it because this is a good one. It's five manager strategies guaranteed to boost sales today with none other than Jen Suzuki, founder and president of eDealer Solutions, an award-winning training company focused on improving salespeople's phone skills, emails, and operating processes. She's going to show us all how it's done, and she's helped so many dealership managers boost their sales, and she can help you do it too. So this will be another can't-miss webinar presentation by your friends at DealerOn. And don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held every Thursday at 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And we have some great webinar subjects planned, but if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, feel free to contact me directly. Again, my name is Eliana. And I love hearing from you, so track me down online or email me at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and we hope to see you all on a future webinar in our continuing education series. Have yourselves a good one, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.